Hello, Miata people of the internet. This is Keith Tanner here from Flying Miata, and I'm here to talk about downforce and drag and all sorts of interesting things you can do with aero. Um, this is basically going to be a recap of some of the information that's on the Nine Lives Racing website. Um, but this is your opportunity to ask some questions. Hopefully, I'll be able to answer, and also just to highlight that it is possible to improve the aerodynamics of the car, both in terms of downforce and grip, and air and, and uh, drag as well. You can have one without the other. It's actually pretty cool. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments if you're watching this live. If you're watching this in the future on YouTube, we will answer them in the comments. If you're watching this live, I'll try to answer them here as we go. So, the re what, what prompted this particular discussion is Nine Lives Racing published their medium downforce kit along with some really interesting technical information about it. Um, they actually did a bunch of CFD, a bunch of examination on exactly what effects different changes had, mostly as a package, um, and I'm going to be talking about that. I'm not going to be talking about separating just one from the other, what happens if you just do an air, uh, air dam, what happens if you just do this other thing. Um, I'm going to look at the whole here because that's part of what you have to do when you're doing aerodynamics. Um, there's no point in increasing a lot of grip at the back end if you don't do anything in the front because what will happen, you'll start understeer more and more as you... Um, as you start going faster, and vice versa with, uh, with your aero balance as well. So how can you do this and still keep some aero balance? So the first thing the guys did was that they, they have some very good 3D models of Miatas that they use for this sort of testing that have been checked not only in terms of they have the good model, but they've actually checked them in wind tunnels and verified them. They are, it's really good data. Uh, and they took just the stock Miata body and said, okay, if we have a stock NA Miata with a hardtop on it, what does that look like aerodynamically? And this is, you can find all this information on the Nine Lives, Nine Lives Racing website in their CFD section, but I'm going to walk through some of this. So the stock body, stock ride height, bone stock Miata with a hard top. As you can see, this is the bone stock Miata behind me. Um, has about almost 400 pounds of drag at, at 150 miles an hour. Now, bone stock Miata, 150 miles an hour, not completely plausible, but hey, it's just a standard number. So that's a fair bit of drag. Your, your car has got to push through that in order to actually well, maintain speed. Um, it also developed a certain amount of lift. At 150 miles an hour, it was generating 229 pounds of lift. The car was actually lighter. Now, that's obviously going to have problems with your grip because your grip comes from the force pushing your tires down into the pavement. Um, but it also has effects on, say, your steering, especially if that, that loss of grip is at the front. Um, the car is going to be a little light. It's going to feel unsteady at high speeds, uncomfortable. Even at 80 miles an hour, there's a 65-pound um, amount of lift on that stock body. The Miata, the NA Miata was designed quite some time ago, as you can imagine. Um, it was designed in the 80s. Um, CAD design was not as solid then. Obviously it is now. They were very proud of how many points they had in the, in the design of the body. But aerodynamics was never a strong point of uh, examination on the car. It was never a, a priority for Miata. They were making a fun little sports car. Top goes down, you know, mirrors and stuff like that. It, it's a dirty car. That's just how it is. So then they did something interesting. So that's the first step. Stock body. Lots of lift. Um, they did something interesting. They dropped the car down by two inches. So basically, figure, so you've put on a suspension kit. You've lowered the car down. You're at the track. What's happening aerodynamically? Well, the drag dropped. Uh, the drag dropped down to about 370 pounds. So what's that? 15 percent. I'm not doing the math well right now. No, it's a little bit less. But 7, 8 percent less drag. That's great. More efficient. Interestingly, it picked up lift. So the lowered car actually has more lift at speed. Um, so you're going to find it quite a bit more. It's, it went from 229 pounds at 150 miles an hour to 312 with a similar sort of ratio at 80 miles an hour. So that lowered car on the track, if you have done no other arrow other than lowering your car, you're going to find that it is going to be getting lighter and lighter at speed. It'll have the steering will be getting lighter. Um, your cornering forces are going to go down. So obviously, this is not a good situation to be in. So what Nine Lives did then is they say, OK, what happens if we install our medium downforce kit? And the medium downforce kit is basically a front air dam, similar to this one, and a 64-inch wing. This is, a, this is a dual element that we have on this car here. But this is what I had available. So this is what I'm using for an example. Um, but just the standard 64-inch big wang that they, uh, that they sell for the Miata. And what effect did that have? And this is interesting. It actually dropped, the, the drag came back up again, but it came back up to almost exactly where it was with a stock body. Those two modifications were uh, effectively free. 
in terms of compared to a stock Miata. But the amount of lift at 150 miles an hour, the 229 pounds of lift that we were seeing, dropped to five, 478 pounds of downforce. And that's enormous. That's a quarter of the weight of the car. Nah, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> my math is, is failing me. I was on vacation for a couple of weeks. My math is, my math is gone. Um, so maybe not a quarter of weight. Let's go with more of an eighth of a weight of the, of the car, but significant proportion of the weight of the car um, actually pressing down on it so it's much more stable. It's got much more grip aerodynamically, and it's basically coming for free. This is no increase in drag. So if you put this on a Miata that was otherwise stock engine or anything like that, you would be faster around the track because you've got the same amount of drag, so the straights are the same, but you can corner much better. And interestingly, it actually picked up a lot more front grip than rear, even with the wing. Um, for this test, they had the wing fairly flat. It was only at, uh, I think, 2 degrees. So this one is running quite a bit steeper, but the wing was, was running very, very low level. Um, so minimum amount of drag, minimum amount of downforce, and it picked up a lot of front, which is great uh, because you're always worried about the front getting light. That does mean the car is going to start to bias more towards oversteer on high-speed corners, which can be a little more exciting. Um, I usually like to bias mine a little towards understeer and high-speed corners just for comfort. But anyhow, that's what, it went, that's what happened to it. And that's, that is basically the, the um, medium downforce kit is the Nine Lives Racing Air Dam. This is not specifically a Nine Lives Racing Air Dam, but it's, it's uh, designed after the same concepts. Uh, basically, it's the big, you want to come around here, Travis? Big flat sheet on the nose with a splitter. Uh, and this has been proven to drop drag quite a bit. Uh, it does make the car slipperier, but it also, it also helps with cooling too because it makes sure that you get all your air in there. And the Nine Lives Racing contribution to this is you can get the Sturdy Boy mounts, which allow you to uninstall and install this very easily for loading onto a trailer or if you're, say, driving around the street and you want to run your street nose and not this thing, which very effective. I can't say it's my favorite aesthetic improvement to the car, but very effective aerodynamically. And then in the rear, of course, we have, we have the wing. That is basically the, the uh, medium downforce kit. We don't list the medium downforce kit specifically at Fly Miata, um, but we do sell the parts for it, so you can put you together. And in case you're wondering what, what the heck this is, uh, we do have a tour of this on our YouTube channel. This is Zombie Elvis. Uh, it's a car that we've owned, that Fly Miata got originally to do the Super 4 Challenge for Car and Driver back in 2003, I think. Um, it's been on the cover of Car and Driver magazine. And it's been through a number of different iterations. Now it is a V8-powered uh, Colorado hill climb series, rally, um, hill climb car. Our hill climbs here are on dirt, like Pikes Peak used to be. So that's what this creature is. It's an absolutely amazing car. A um, little bit weird for aero, but it does have the full aero package on it. So that's why we're using it as our example. So Nine Lives Racing took that medium downforce kit with the zero extra drag, but you know, not quite enough rear grip and they basically increased the wing to five degrees of angle of attack. And that was right on the edge of stall. That's, that's about as steep as you can go before you stall the wing. And that picked up, let me get my numbers, a little bit of drag, a couple of pounds of drag, almost within the, the margins of error, I would say. But it also increased the, um, the rear downforce enough to give the balance within a few percent of where it was on the stock body. So you, you got your handling balance back again. Um, overall downforce went up just a little bit, a couple of percent, um, but it's a very, very noticeable difference overall. Um, that would make, like I said, even a stock engine 1.6 Miata is still going to benefit from this thing. Uh, Nine Lives has seen improvements of, say, three seconds a lap. It's going to depend on your course um, from just that because you're not losing your straight line speed, but you are gaining your cornering speed. So arrow can work for you. You've got to push that air around anyway. Might as well make it do something for you. Do you have any questions that have come in yet, Kyle? Uh, not on topic. No, <laughs> not on topic. Uh, we do have Johnny from Nine Lives Racing, I believe, uh, lurking in the comments right now. So um, he can probably answer some more specific questions that I can because uh, he's the guy who's got the CFG. I'm just basically reiterating what he's, uh, what he's done. So here are some of the questions that have come to us about this. Um, will there be a medium downforce kit for the Exocet, and I hate to tell you, the Exocet is an aerodynamic disaster. Um, I can't see Nine Lives Racing coming up with a specific kit for that. They may surprise me. Johnny, there's your challenge. But uh, yeah, Exocets, unfortunately, are, are not a place where you're going to see excellent aerodynamics. Exposed tubes are ugly, um, and that's just how, how it works. You have to make it up for, make for it up with 
make up for it with lightweight instead. Um, so one of the questions is, how effective is the kit without the air dam? Now, you will need something on the front. If you just jam the wing on the back, you are going to pick up a lot more rear downforce. You're not going to have it on the front. You're going to find that the car is probably going to be light in the front. Um, some sort of front air dam, maybe not quite that far. Uh, the, the popular right behind you, Travis, is the GV lip um, that, uh, that is streetable. You can put that on a street car and it's not going to look terrible. Um, that's what I run on my own track car and I've been able to get some pretty good balance using that. I did add a splitter to that as well. I extended it out about three inches. And that's a good, uh, it does cut down on drag. Uh, it's a good solution for someone who doesn't want to go the whole hog on the full splitter but um, it is not going to be as effective. It's not quite as slippery, not quite as much downforce, but little kids aren't going to point and laugh at you in the parking lot. So you got that going for you. Um, how do hood ducts affect downforce with this kit? And generally speaking, hood ducts, such as or hood vents like on this car, I've talked about this before. We have a video talking about hood louvers on our channel. These will generally increase front downforce to some extent. Um, because you're getting rid of this low pressure area on top of the hood, you're feeding some more air into it, so it helps, helps that, uh, that front end stick a little bit better. The car doesn't have a lot of problem making front downforce, which is very interesting. It's not something you would have expected. But yes, the, the um, hood louvers such as these will only help in that regard. So how does it, here's an interesting one. How does the Nine Lives Racing wing compared to a Lexan rear wing? Now what that's comparing to is not so much a rear wing, but, um, hey Kyle, is the, uh, is the trunk lid for Nancy sitting around? Here we go, we have, a, we have a Lexan rear wing on the way. Now this is really a spoiler. Spoilers and wings are different things aerodynamically. Thank you, Mike. Do, do, do. I'm just gonna put this down here and try not to step on it. That is the Lexan spoiler that most people are used to, used to seeing. This is one from Blackbird's Fabrics. Blackbird Fab Works. Um, our friend Modi put this together. It's a nice kit. It's very well, very solid, very popular in autocross world. Um, this is an ND one specifically, but it does the, uh, does the same thing. What makes this different primarily, and I, this is not a wing. The reason is because you're not using both sides really. Air is not going underneath. This is a spoiler. This is meant to basically deflect the air up and push the car down at the, at the same, because of that. Um, it can also have effects on how the air separates at the back of the car, but this is mostly what you're looking for. This is a little bit of a crude device. Um, fair bit of drag penalty with something like this. But a lot of classes will not allow you to run a true wing that has air going on both sides and uses actual, uh, you know, Bernoulli's principle to, to force you down. So this is, this is a good choice uh, because it's not as obnoxious, perhaps, as a big wing for a lot of people. You can easily take it on and off. Um, and it may be class legal, but uh, it is not going to be as effective, especially from a drag standpoint, as running a proper, uh, a properly designed wing. So that's what that question is about. Okay, do we have anything else going on there with the Kyle? Well, we have a couple questions that have come in. Okay, what do we have? Uh, someone's asking about uh, using an underbody kit for more downforce. An under, okay, the question is, what about using an underbody kit? Now, here we're getting away from some of the Nine Lives Racing stuff. Um, the, the question is basically, can you improve the aerodynamics by smoothing out the, the, the bottom of the car? And the answer is, yeah, you definitely can. You've got a lot of surface area down there. So even if you get a very small pressure differential, you can actually have quite an effect on how, how well the car sticks to the ground. Um, it is an effect that is very sensitive to ride height. So if you build your car, your car's handling around that, you can get yourself into a little bit of trouble if you've all of a sudden got a heave or the nose of the car comes up. Uh, you could do what Mark Webber did back in the uh, 90s at Le Mans and go end over end. Um, haven't seen that happen to Miata yet. It would be dramatic, but in theory it can happen. Uh, we actually, and I, I can't remember if these are still there, we've experimented a little bit with flat bottoms on track cars. And the current frame rails, do they still have the, the threaded bungs on them? They do. Yeah, the current frame rails that we offer actually have threaded inserts on them that would allow you to add panels to the bottom of the car to make that a flat under tray. It's not really something we've advertised <laughs> because we never came up with the rest of the kit, but it's something you could certainly play with if you wanted to. Just watch out for uh, transmission temperatures um, from, the, uh, from the transmission and, of course, the exhaust running down through that tunnel. But yes, uh, making a flat bottom could certainly 
improve the efficiency of the car. And again, if you can control that airflow a little bit, you can really make a lot of downforce out of that. Uh, I was underneath a Tesla Model 3 yesterday, and those things are completely and utterly smooth the whole way down. They've even got little, um, even got little shrouds on the rear control arms to make sure that they're nice and smooth. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Kind of hard to do when you've got a transmission and exhaust down there, but I mean, when it's just a battery pack, you can get away with it. Uh, anything else over there? Winglets on the ends of a splitter. Now, this is the point where I'm going to have to start tap dancing. Uh, Johnny, I, hopefully you know more about this. This is probably basically the equivalent of end plates on the end of a splitter. It should help. Uh, the reason you have end plates is because the way the wing works, you've got high pressure here, low pressure here, and that sucks the wing down. And having this end plate keeps the air from just sort of spilling off the end, the high pressure air from spilling off the end of the wing and going underneath and ruining the lift or the downforce in this section. And that will work on a splitter as well. You're trying to keep air from cheating and going around the outside. Exactly how much of a benefit it'll get you, I'm not sure. Um, you can do a nice job of slicing a cone right in half if you're on the autocross course with it, which is, which is fun. One of the questions we also had earlier is how much effect this can have at autocross speeds. And obviously you're not going to be making hundreds of pounds of downforce with something like this at autocross speeds. This is a very efficiently designed wing. Um, it's designed to be minimum drag. But if you really crank up the angle of attack, you might put it in the stall. It'll get really draggy. You can get away with that a little bit more on, uh, on autocross. But uh, basically for autocross, you just need bigger elements, more angle of attack, basically get more aggressive. Take the drag hit because you're probably not power limited um, because you're more concerned with just plain grip. Autocross uh, speeds, you can have very big effect on with aero, but um, you do have to do something different. When I first installed a wing on my own track car, um, it was one of the NASCAR Car of Tomorrow wings, optimized for 150 miles an hour plus, obviously. And uh, on our local track, that was worth, I think it was two seconds a lap with an average speed of, a, of 48 miles an hour. So even a wing that was completely inappropriate for the use um, at autocross speeds was still effective. So this, this sort of stuff will still work in autocross. Just be aware that if you are interested in whatever your class is, something like this, significant class hit right here. Because they work. Funny how that happens. Uh, now, there's a lot of questions in here. Um, some of them are about, uh, about subtle aerodynamic modifications. That's where we get into things like that GV lip that I talked about earlier. Um, obviously, this is not subtle, uh, but easily removed. It's just, you know, in this one, it's just attached with a few bolts in here. The non labs racing one, you can take that on and off relatively easily. Uh, so that's probably the best way to get aero with being subtle. Uh, the little trunk lip, the small lip spoilers, don't really do much. Um, I asked Tom Matano about the R-Package lip a few years ago, for trunk spoiler, and he called it aerodramatics was the term he used for that. Um, they don't really do much at all. But the front, it can do quite a bit. The back looks cool. Uh, on the street, the best aerodynamic improvement you can make to the car on the street is hard top um, because it's considerably slipperier than the soft top and uh, quieter too, which is kind of nice. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything more over there? Okay, so the question is, how much difference does the height of the wing have to do with how effective it is? And it's one of those things where up to a certain point, it will make a difference. If you're down here where there's all sorts of messy airflow coming off the hardtop, if I remember correctly from our testing, we get separated airflow somewhere around here, so it's just kind of ugly in this area. If you're down in that, in that regime, it's probably not going to work very well. But the Nine Labs Racing mount kits, they get the wing up high enough so it is effectively clean air. Going higher than that is not going to get you anywhere. Uh, and they actually mentioned that in their write-up, what they say about the height. I don't have this in front of me here. Um, but basically, the Nine Lives Racing mounts are as high as you need to go. Any higher is not going to get you anything. And they're roughly about the same as this. I think it's slightly lower than this, than this thing is here. So, yeah, higher is better up to a point, and then possibly quite draggier, actually, after a certain point. So there's, uh, there's definitely a sweet spot for that. We experimented years ago with putting a wing right in the ground effect area in here, and we had to do some modifications to the airflow coming off the, off the, uh, the top. And it looked promising. It wasn't backed up with CFD. It was just simply, okay, driver, we bolted on the new wing. What do you think? He said, feels pretty good. I think the driver was a little too adaptable, so I'm not sure if we can say that that was successful, but it was an interesting idea to play with. Is, uh, I think we were 60% of the core of the wing off the deck. Um, to try to take advantage of the, of the ground effect on here. Fun thing to play with. I, hope, I look forward to someone playing with that one. 
Uh, now, there's a question here on how to adjust the wing based on the speed of the straights and corners to make it balanced. Now, basically, the best way to adjust the wing is experimentation. Um, if you go too far, it will start to stall. It will start losing effectiveness, and the drag shoots right up. Um, the Nine of Knives racing wings without a gurney flap, without this secondary element, uh, it's about five degrees measured, you know, measured across the high points here. Uh, that's about where it starts to stall. Uh, you can get away with more than that with a gurney flap. We do sell those, the wicker bills. Um, so this wing is designed to be run pretty flat. But the general rule of thumb is keep adding more downforce until you start to go slower, until the drag down the straights is not being paid back by increased corner speeds. Um, with this sort of setup, there's a limit to how much you can do on that. I generally set it up for what I like in terms of how it feels, whatever the clock says is fastest. Um, I generally set my own car up with a little less rear aerodynamic balance sorry, a little more rear aerodynamic balance um, than it does static. So when I'm in slow corners, it oversteers a little bit more. When I'm in high corners, it starts planting the back so that the car is more stable. Because I, I find that easier to move the car around in the slow stuff and hairpins. I can take advantage of that sort of balance. And then at high speeds, I've got the stability of having the rear end nicely planted. It's just, it's more comfortable. You generally want to have the balance pretty close to the actual static weight balance of the car. Kyle, anything else? Nothing on topic. All right, is Johnny in there? Um, yeah, offering advice. <laughs> so that's probably going to get us where we need to get today. Um, there are, of course, we could talk about aerodynamic stuff for hours because it's fascinating. I, I love the fact you need to push this air around anyway. You might as well make it worthwhile. And there's all sorts of tools, all sorts of different things you can do with that. But that's a little look at how you can get downforce for free. Well, without a drag penalty. It's not free. Nine Lives Racing stuff is an excellent value for money, though, and you're going to do much better with some of their wings than you will with buying some generic. I saw a photocopy of a picture of a wing on, um, in a magazine one time sort of thing that you find on Amazon and eBay. Most of those things are complete fiction. So stick with the good stuff, and you'll actually get some real, some real benefits. So if you have any further questions, please go put them in the comments. Uh, if you like this sort of con content, please let us know. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. You know the whole deal. Uh, we'll be back next week for some more information, but for the time being, my name is Keith Tanner from Fly Miata. Thanks for your attention.